Shao just doesn't have enough damage to clear this Pyral Abyss anymore. Shao's AoE is useless against all these bosses. Shao always needs a battery. Shao doesn't have a dedicated support. Shao needs his own artifact set too. I am exhausted of the narrative that Shao has fallen off in the meta of Genshin Impact, and all these players haven't even reached the true endgame build yet. So today, I'll freaking show you. This is what an endgame Shao truly looks like. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTube. It's your Slime King, the Juma Man, and welcome to another video. This is my Shao build. At first glance, it's nothing special, right? My crit ratio is simply not high enough to garner the attention of big PP damage seekers, but look a little closer. My Shao has 165 ER. This is the true endgame build. Throughout this video, my whole run with Shao in Floor 12 of Abyss will be showcased, just to show you how incredibly potent this build is. And during that, I'll explain why this is so. First, let's talk about crit, crit ratios, and the obsession players have with having the most crit damage possible. I'm sure you've seen the perfect Shao builds in the past. 100 crit rate, 250 crit damage. This is a good stat line, do not get it twisted. We are all subjected to the suffering of artifact RNG after all, so we use what we can get. However, this is not the true endgame build. While this sort of crit ratio gives Shao the best in terms of plunge damage, people are simply not looking at the bigger picture. Players are so fixated on pumping crit damage through the roof that they neglect every other stat in the game. They often neglect attack, EM, and the focus of this video, Energy Recharge. Energy Recharge is one of the most valuable stats for Shao. At a glance at his kit, you can see that he can easily funnel two skills back to his burst as he is casting it, effectively battering himself. It's clear that Shao was balanced behind the idea that his damage was locked to his burst and that without it, he deals no damage. This means that you always have to run another Anemo support in order to reliably get his burst back up on demand. The problem with this is that the Anemo units currently in the game do not have a great synergy with Shao. The best candidates are Sucrose and Jean. Sucrose provides all the energy he needs, the Bless and the TTDS buff. However, that is all she does. She doesn't effectively enable Shao in a way Sarah would for Raiden. TTDS buff also doesn't last the entire duration of Shao's burst. Jean also provides all those things, sans the TTDS buff, but with the healing that Shao desperately needs. The end line stays the same. Jean does nothing to truly enable Shao or add damage besides that. But what if you can just not run an Anemo support? Now, no support in the game currently can truly enable Shao to the fullest. However, it cannot be denied that if you replace his current Anemo supports with off-field DPSs instead, his teams would be much more flexible and better. The problem with that is, well, you simply don't have enough ER to burst every rotation. However, that statement is false. This is where the true endgame Shao build comes in. As a general rule of thumb, if you are struggling to burst off cooldown, the ideal ER requirements would be the same as their burst cost. So for Shao who has a 70 cost burst, his ideal ER would be at 170 ER. Now this isn't something that's set in stone but meant to be a baseline or a guide for you to play around with. It can definitely be lower than that or higher than that depending on the energy generation of your team. With my Shao at 165 ER and a decent crit ratio, I can reliably burst when I want to. This opens the doors to many other team comps. Why is that important? As you've seen in this video, I used Yai, Miko, and Fischl as the other members of my team, with Shao and Zhongli. These two units provide a hefty amount of off-field damage that can be better than running an Anemo unit and another Geo unit. Not to mention that Electro Resonance also gives more leeway in ER requirements for Shao. This kind of team comp also provides better consistency in damage. For example, when you are against Vishaps that get staggered easily and get separated, this team guarantees that you'd still be doing damage even if these mother freaking lizard men get a seizure from slight taps of a spear. Off-field DPS becomes a much more attractive option than batteries ever will. And now you can tailor your team around the content that you wish Shao to send battle into. Shao will objectively deal less damage with this build. This isn't the typical endgame build you are all used to. The correct balance of stats will make units far better than skewing everything towards crit. In the context of team damage and versatility, there is no question that this build becomes better. So what am I trying to say with all of this? It's simple. Stop hyperfixating on crit stats. 
I'm sure you have many potential pieces in your artifact inventory right now that have a ton of ER rolls and only one to two crit rolls. You are maybe averse to using it now, but that artifact has potential to unlock what Shao truly wants to do. And that is being able to battery himself up back to full within the brevity of his own skill. He will be unshackled from the restrictions of running a battery and his fullest strength will be truly unlocked. It might not be his damage ceiling, but it is his team's damage ceiling. This is what a true endgame Shao looks like, my friends. Don't be fooled by the humongous crit ratios. Shao can't one-rotate floors that matter anyway, and those builds are almost always unsustainable past two rotations. With the current trends in the abyss, we must adapt in order to survive. There is just something sweet about running a batteryless team and a team that runs Shao, Fischl, Yunjin, and Kokomi without a goddamn care in the world. What do you think? Is this the true endgame Shao build? I bet you'd still rather have that spicy 300 crit damage and forever be shackled with a sucrose battery. Come at me at Twitch, at twitch.tv slash Man, where I stream Genshin almost every day. This is our parting. Farewell.